Hey guys, it's Carla. Today, I don't have my outline drawn on yet because I want to get my background on there first. So, I'm going to use a palette knife to do my background because that will give me a really unique look. So, I'm just going to scrape this on vertically, letting it, um, letting the paint break so that that raw sienna shows through. This is just a really cool um, abstract background. And then I'm going to change the color to a greenish shade and do the, the ground. I did the sky vertically. I'm going to do the ground horizontally. Now I want to add a little bit of darkness right here where the wagon is going to sit just as a kind of a shadow or the indication of a shadow anyway all right now i've dried it and i've sketched on my outline so now i want to i want to paint the wagon and feel free to paint it whatever color you want but i'm just mixing up a brownish shade And this, this small flat brush is the only brush that I'll be using through this whole painting. Um, not that you have to, but it's just, to me it helps when you, you kind of push yourself to use, to use a brush that maybe you wouldn't normally use for a certain area because it'll give you more of a loose painting. If I switched in places to, to a smaller, like a little round brush or something, um, I might try to get too detailed with it. So to use a larger brush than, than what you feel like you need kind of helps the painting stay loose. I know these wheels are not perfect, but you don't want them to be because this is supposed to be very loose, very messy. So right here, I'm just starting to highlight the wagon and I'll come back and highlight it more later. So there's times when I use the flat part of the brush and there's times when I use the, um, the skinny edge. And there's times when I use the corner. Um, I'll be doing that a lot when, when I start putting the flowers in. So you can just look at your reference photo and see where these, where the light shades and the dark shades are, but not that it matters a whole lot because I don't even, in this painting, I don't even really um, have a plan as far as where my light is coming from. Um, 
I mean, kind of, in a way I do, but but not, not to any extreme. So, mostly I'm using the lights and the darks um, as separation, just so that you can see it all so it doesn't blend together. I'm just adding different shades into my wagon so again um, make it whatever whatever color you like just try to keep it really loose All right, now I'm gonna start on my greenery. I don't like using just plain green, so I like to mix other colors in with it. And I'm just turning my brush in different directions and um, kind of dabbing this on there. If you don't turn it in different directions, you, t you tend to get a pattern, and you don't want that, so just kind of turn your wrist every now and then. All right, now you want that green to be dry before you start putting the flowers on, and you can put whatever color flowers you want, but whatever color flower you're, you're doing, you want to start with the medium tone, like the main color of the flower, I guess, and then add um, shadows and highlights. So I want my main color to be this, this shade of pink. So then I'm gonna pick up just red, and with the corner of my brush, I'm just dabbing that into the center just very loosely. And then with a the light pink, I'm gonna scumble in some highlights with the corner of the brush. I'm just barely tapping, scumbling this in. And if you'll notice that really, uh, that really makes the flowers pop. But then I realized that I've kind of got my flowers spaced too evenly. So I wanna come back and add more, more flowers. So I'm gonna go back to that medium tone and just kind of make a little cluster here so that it looks more organic. But I'm doing them the same way, just the medium shade and then the dark and then the light. And I like the way that looks better with it. Some clusters there. All right, and then I decided to put some stems in and put some little flowers on top of the stems. So again, I'm gonna do it the same way. Medium tone, dark tone, and light tone. Well, now on these, these are so small, I didn't even put the the red in there, the dark tone. Okay, so now I want to highlight my greenery. So 
So again, I'm just using the tip of the brush and just dabbing that on. And just keep your brush moving, just keep it really loose. Now I'm lightening that up a little bit and doing the same thing, just not as much of it. And it's okay if you get over into your handle there because you can come back and clean that up with brown later. Now I've decided to add some blue flowers just for some contrast and more color. So with the blue ones, I'm just, I'm starting out with just the plain blue, just straight, straight blue, and then the highlight color. So there's no, there's not three tones to this one. I'm just, just doing the dark and the light. Again, I'm just using the tip of the, the corner of the brush to to dab this in. All right, now with blue, I'm adding a little color to my shadow. I feel like this is this is kind of a spring painting, so I wanted it to be colorful. So I'm cleaning up my handle right here where I got into it with the flowers. Now right here under the wheels, I'm, I want it to be really dark where the wheels are touching the ground. watering down a highlight color um, just to kind of make the wagon pop a little more. Okay, now I want to mix up a really dark shade with the green and the brown and the blue and give my greenery some more depth. So if I just tap this in with the corner of the brush, just in, in places where I want it to be really deep, then that will give me that illusion. Now with pure white, and I want to be careful with this, I don't want to put too much of just plain white, but it does help the flowers to pop, so I'm just kind of dabbing that in with the tip of the, the corner of the brush. So I hope you guys like this. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a great day, and God bless you.